Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. So good to see you tonight in the house of God. Let's all stand. Amen. Aren't you thankful to know who Jesus is? Amen. He's still the rock, amen, that holds you, the foundation, amen, on which to stand, praise God. Let's call on him together, let's just trust him, whatever you want to do, Jesus, do it in me tonight. Lord, we love you, Jesus. God, we call on your name together over this house, Lord. God, we surrender our lives to you once again, Jesus. Lord, we've come to worship you, God, to lift up your mighty name, Jesus, Lord. You've been so good to us, Lord. You've loved us so much, Jesus, and we return that tonight, God. We draw nigh unto you, Jesus. Lord, we love you, Savior. You first loved us, and we give you the glory tonight and the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we love you, Lord. We praise you in Jesus' name. Let's lift up the name of the Lord.
to the utmost when I think about the Lord. Oh, how he picked me up and turned me around. How he placed my feet on solid ground. about it tonight. Hallelujah. How he picked me up and turned me around. How he placed my feet, he placed them on solid ground. It makes me, oh, it makes me want to shout. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all so many blessings undeserved amen that's what we are we ought to be thankful and love and praise him a little bit more today a whole lot more tomorrow praise god amen we're going to go before the lord in prayer let's remember brother and sister potts tonight uh, he is home amen so let's remember him for strength and healing as well sister potts amen good to see sister Marilyn tonight in the house of the lord yeah. amen. amen thank god Thank God, amen, amen. Let's remember Doyle Walters. This is uh, the Kelly's son-in-law. These are prayers tonight. Brother Jeff Grundy, remember him in prayer for his heart. Uh, Brother Adams, he needs healing tonight for his back. Uh, let's remember the Heskett family as well in our prayers. Brother Mark Taggart, that God will continue to heal him, strengthen him. Uh, Mary Miller needs our prayers. Sister Tammy Williams needs our prayers tonight. Sister Robin Buglin. 
and also Alan Hivner, his arm, uh, Jerry Schreiber for healing. Uh, Brother Paul Evans is having surgery, so you need to remember him. Had it yesterday. Had it yesterday, okay. Let's remember him as he recovers, that God will just touch him and strengthen him. Sister Lisa Taggart, Sister Angie Maxwell, uh, Sister Holly Zinn needs our prayers. Uh, Brother Walter Norman's in his nursing home, and he needs our prayers tonight. Samantha Jadwin needs our prayers. Reba Petrie, Sister Whitney's mother, need to remember her tonight as we pray. And also um, Holly Barnside needs our prayers. And Kyle Updegrave, Audrey Work, Stephen Cherry Smith also need our prayers, missionaries. Amanda Williams, and also remember Sister Luella Anson tonight in prayer. Praise God. Any other urgent needs tonight we need to make known? Now is the only way. Amen. Peggy. Brittany and pray. Okay, let's remember her tonight. Amen. Sister Debbie. Okay, all right. Okay. Amen. okay. Thank you. Brother Clyde. Sweet on your Bible school. and over them. Amen. Amen, Brother John. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Amen. 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 Sister Bag, would you have your hand up back there? Families. Okay. All right. Amen. Praise God. All right, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Continue to trust him. Amen. Yes, Jesus is still the so answer. God. Amen. Let's call on him together, Thank church. You, Lord. Lord Jesus, Thank we love you tonight, Lord. We call God, on your name we over this house, Jesus. You, Lord. Lord, that you would intervene we right now, Jesus, in these situations. You, God, we're believing you, God, for a move of your we spirit, your power. Jesus. God, your healing, Jesus. Lord, upon Brother Potts tonight, God. Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let him feel the power of God come in, Lord. Let every prayer request tonight, Jesus, Lord, every unspoken God, every uplifted hand tonight, Jesus, be heard, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray tonight, God, touch with Walters tonight, Jesus, with the Jeff Grundy, Brother Adams tonight, Lord. Ask your family, Jesus, Lord, Brother Mark Taggart, God, we pray, Lord. Sister Mary Miller, Jesus, Sister Tammy Williams tonight, Sister Rama, God, that you would move, God, in each situation, God. God, that you would move. Lord, with healing, God, of strength, God, encouragement will come, Lord. The Spirit of the Lord would uplift right now. The Comforter will come in, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I believe that right now to happen. God, I believe Jesus at the very mention of your name. God, situations can change, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we can be healed, God. We can receive renewed strength, Jesus. Lord, we praise you right now, God. God, we ask, Lord, that you would move, Jesus, Lord, upon Alan Hibner, Lord. That you would heal and touch his arm, Jesus, Lord. Lord, Jerry Schreiber, Lord. Brother Paul Evans, as he recovers tonight, God, we pray, Lord. Sister Lisa, Sister Angie, tonight, God, that you'd move, Lord, upon their lives, Jesus. Lord, Sister Holly's will, God, we pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Brother Norman, tonight, God, we upon his life, Jesus. Send strength, God, into that body, God. So may the Jad, with the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray right now, God. You send strength, Jesus, Lord, we pray, God, we Petri, God, be healed, Lord. The power of your name, Lord, the name of Jesus, Lord. God, I pray, Lord, you touch the Smiths tonight, God, missionaries, Lord, touch their lives, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray, God, that you would move in every need in this house, Lord. God, every family, Lord, every circumstance, oh God, in Jesus' name, Lord, we pray peace right now will come, oh God. Jesus, in your name, Lord, we pray right now. Fear would leave, oh God, in Jesus' name, faith would rise, Lord. Doubt would be removed, Lord, in this house. In the name of Jesus, we praise you, God. We're giving you the glory tonight. God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, hallelujah, Lord, we praise you, God. We praise you, Lord, we praise you. Would you clap your hands unto God and thank him for what he's done. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're good to us. Hallelujah, Lord, we thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. I ask the ushers to come forward to receive this evening's offering. Amen. 
continue to remember in prayer uh, those that have been coming into the church, amen, been receiving the Holy Ghost, been baptized in Jesus' name, praise God, amen. God wants to do greater things, amen. How many believe God's going to do something great, amen? This past Sunday night, the power of God was, we was outside in the service, the power of God was just moving, amen. You can feel the presence of the Lord, and that's what it's going to take in this end time. The power of the Holy Ghost, amen, comes into the church service. It just moves you, changes you, amen. So thankful for that. Let's ask the Lord's blessing over the offering. Jesus, we thank you tonight, Lord, to be in your presence among your people. God, we're thankful, God, for the unity message we heard Sunday night. God, we ask, Lord, you bless this offering, God, that you would multiply it, Jesus, Lord, for your purpose, Lord, to be fulfilled, God, through us, Lord, and in this world. We give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said Amen. Let's give unto the Lord. The ushers will come to you tonight. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. We're going to stand tonight and uh, take our Bibles. While we're turning to Psalm 133, we're going to just do a little bit of follow-up on Sunday night. Amen. And what the Lord was talking to us about. Amen. That service was not published online uh, because we were outside and putting everything together. Right now, we're going to dismiss the children to go to their classes. Amen. And just trust the Lord. Teachers will have a great time with them. It's good to see each of you. Uh, just asking you to pray that God would continue to touch folks. Amen. I, uh, I'm, I know that there's a lot going on in this world right now, and there's a lot of things uh, being said, a lot of things that uh, should be said, probably a lot of things that should not be said, amen, And uh, but uh, I, I give glory to God, and I believe that His Word needs to be said, amen, let His Word be shouted from the housetops, and uh, it is just good to be in the presence of the Lord, uh, would ask you to keep in mind Invite somebody, pray about it first, and I invite somebody to come to the house of the Lord. Now is a great time to get somebody to come to the house of the Lord. Just tell them everything is safe. Uh, we're doing our best to keep people safe here at the house of the Lord, and we don't want anybody getting sick, and so we have uh, worked extra hard with that. Please remember uh, the missionaries, the Smiths, Steve and Sherry Smith. Uh, they are in Guyana. And uh, they are very, very ill at this time. Uh, I don't know the root of that problem, but I do know that God can take care. Amen. Even uh, amongst uh, our folks all of that distance away. And so uh, we're just asking God to touch them. Amen. Psalm 90, or excuse me, 133. And again, I just, I feel urged today to revisit that. Uh, portion of scripture and to to minister the word of the Lord and uh, please keep uh, brother and sister Potts in your prayers as well he just got home from a uh, doctor visit just just a few moments ago and I wanted to be in the house of the Lord but uh, just could not uh, reach into that so let's let's start at uh, 133 and 1 it says behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity it is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard. And if you'll recall, uh, Aaron was a high priest that went down to the skirts of his garments as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Praise God. Amen. And you may be seated. And uh, very, I just felt the Lord so strong. Some, some uh, theologians conjecture that David penned this psalm upon occasion of the union between the tribes of Israel uh, when they all met unanimously to make him king. Pl please understand that there was a, a division that was among uh, the tribes of, of Israel at that time. And uh, some were following David at this point, some were following others, and this is the point uh, that they believe that 
It brought all of the 12 tribes of Israel together to act as the most powerful nation uh, that the world had ever seen, amen, at that time. And I know that there have been uh, many uh, experiments. They call the American uh, democracy or republic, I should rather say. A lot of people want to call it a democracy. It's really a republic. But they say that it is the great experiment that has now been going on over 200 years. A lot of people do not believe that uh, folks can govern themselves and that we can have uh, what in reality is a, a revolution uh, probability or possibility every four years. Uh, and that is held through an election. It is not held through uh, the use of force. However, I do see a, a point on the horizon of America when there are some that would, that would attempt to make uh, our electoral system to be uh, a, a normal, what they would call a normal revolution that would happen with the taking up of arms and through uh, social dissatisfaction. But I want you to know something today, that in the kingdom of God, amen, the Lord reigns supreme. Praise God. And uh, Jesus Christ is the King of kings. And if the world could uh, fall in line with God's original intent and an original plan, the original plan that is that, that God would reign supreme and that his people would serve him. However, amen, that has not happened. We know what happened in the fall in the Garden of Eden. And uh, there was something that, that I just felt to, uh, I was uh, studying the other day and reading a little bit, and I'm not sure that I made it completely clear. Um, I just wanted to embellish just a little bit if I could because, you know, when we look back into the early parts of the Bible and we see where Adam and Eve enjoyed peace and calm in unity with God in uh, the Garden of Eden. And then finally, uh, there comes to the point to where uh, the serpent who was inhabited being used by the devil uh, hopped up on a, on a log and, and began to challenge the Word of God. And the question was, you know, uh, did God really say? First thing was, got them to question. And then he said this. He made this proclamation. He says, God knows that in the day that you eat of that fruit, you will be as God and you will know good from evil. Now, uh, there were some promises that were made there. There were some accusations that were made there. And we need to understand that yes, the enemy was after the souls of Adam and Eve. He was, he was working to drive a wedge in what I would call a three-way wedge, a wedge between the man and the wife, the man and the woman, between the man and God, and between the woman and God. And when the attack came, uh, we, we see the craftiness that was so well uh, put together by the devil because he didn't just come and say to the, uh, the man and the woman that, you know, you're being cheated. And uh, it's the basic tenets of advertising is that we are missing out on something because, you know, we may not have uh, a certain type of automobile or, you know, uh, years ago, you know, you're missing running water or you're missing uh, this kind of thing. You're missing a car with air conditioning. You know, you really need to invest and pay us more to have those things. And that's how the devil stepped up. And it was more, though, than just Adam and Eve and God was cheating them. What, what they were really saying is that, you know, God is scared. God is afraid that if you really know what's going on and if you would eat of this fruit of this, this tree of good and evil, then that, that you will be like God and that God will somehow lose his power lose his authority. And, and folks, I want you to know today that, that we looking back now, uh, out of these, out of all of these years now down the road, that there's a, a, just a few things that we need to understand. Number one, God never ceased to be God, and God never lost any power. God never lost any authority. God never lost any uh, uh, of the, the knowledge that he would have. Praise God. Now, man suffered at the hands of this knowledge and good and evil. You know what? There are just some things that is not good to know. 
Hello, if I can put it that way, you know, I, if we could have not known what sin was like, how much better would we have been? Think about the suffering that humanity has today. You know, the real, the real degradation of sin and the competition that has been put into our world. You know, part of the, what they call the American dream is that of competition. But there has to be something in that competition that allows folks that uh, to be able to uh, because if, if you allow competition to go to its complete end, you will see that some people will always lose out and then others will always win. And to a degree, there is some of that. But there needs to be guardians. There needs to be uh, things to where people are protected and things there needs to be a a fairness. And uh, I think that that is what a lot of people are calling out today. And and a lot of blaming is going on in this world today. And uh, a lot of accusations fly around uh, all the time. And it is a it is a troublesome thing to think about all of that. And all of these things are the result of the fall in the Garden of Eden. What the devil, excuse me, what Adam and Eve unleashed upon us through their sin and through every human being since then has been something that has taken us to a place where we really did not want to go. It is a place of confusion, and confusion is the antithesis of unity. Now, when we look into the word of the Lord, and as I mentioned the other night, there, there is a certain part of unity that, that we need in our lives. And I want to say this right now, that with, before the Adam and Eve sin in the garden, they lived in a state of unity. They lived in a state of agreement. They lived in a place, praise God, where uh, there was a calmness that was there. They didn't, they didn't really know what stress was about. Stress wasn't something that they, they had the understanding about because all of their needs were met. There was no lack in what they had. There was, God provided all of their needs. He, Adam, the Bible says, God noticed that he was lonely, and so God made him a help me, praise the Lord, which uh, is something very critical that we need to understand that, that a mate is such a powerful person to have in your life, and a mate a true mate, one that is satisfied, you know, and in unity with a husband and wife in their relationship. There is a calmness. There is a trust. There is a, a refreshing to know that, that you can trust, you know, this person that you have dedicated your life to. There is that place that, of happiness that we can understand. But I want to I want to dig a little bit deeper into what unity is and possibly to what it is not. We do know that it is an agreement. We do know that it is uh, people coming together in, in the scriptures, and we're going to review a few of them here in a little bit. The, the real word that we're looking at here when we talk about unity in, in uh, Psalm 133 there and verse 1, the very last word is yachad. Yachad. And what that means, it means to be in agreement. It means to walk together. And so when we look at this and understand what God really had in mind for us, it was that state of agreement. And I, I want to say something uh, and make sure that it's clear tonight in this. When you look at that very, that first one there, and, and you see it says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is. For brethren to dwell together in unity, when you read that last word there, together in unity, it's actually that same Hebrew word presented twice. It's mentioned twice. There is something very powerful when God says something twice in the Bible. You go into the New Testament, and whenever you read Jesus saying something like, Verily, verily, I say unto you, it is, amen, a, it is a, a power pack. It is almost like a double barrel shotgun being released. There is twice the force, twice the energy. That, uh, and it, the effect, though, when that energy is released, it's more than just the sum of those two barrels being released. Actually, there is a, a force that causes it to be greater than the sum. Amen. 
And when we look into this and understand it, it is so powerful to know. And so when it talks about agreement and when we look at this and understand what that word literally means, it, it means it's, it's translated in a lot of different ways, but it means together. It means all together. And when we read the word of the Lord, it means union, unitedness. And I, I really have a trouble sometimes when people use part of the word to describe or to define a word. So in, in other words, together, togetherness, all together, all together alike. And so God mentioned this twice. Amen. When we when we look at this here and we see it is a song of degree. Now, we need to understand what a song of degree. You might read your Bible through there and you'll read there are 15 songs of degrees. And what it was in reference to is there were 15 uh, steps that led up to the temple. At least that's what they believe it to be. But it was uh, not only that, but it was a, a word. This was literally a song that was to be sung. And what it what it does, what it does, does in Hebrew, I kind of what it does, that didn't sound right. So let me <laughs> step back. What it does in the Hebrew language and not so much in English, in Hebrew, it presents a cadence, almost like, you know, you join the military and you're walking along and you say, huh, two, three, four, huh, two, three, four. Or they'll even make up songs as they go. Here we go running down the road. We're as ugly as we go. And you can just make up whatever you want. Well, when they're marching to the temple, when they're making their way, they would sing these songs of degree in cadence, and they were almost marching. They would make sure that they didn't go too slow, too fast, but they would sing that song uh, and, and the cadence would, would direct their steps. That is really cool, folk, when you think about it this way. When you get a group of people that are all marching together to the same beat, when they have got the same things on their mind and they're in love with Jesus Christ, let me tell you something. There's nothing more that we can have that's any greater, amen, than to join together in the name of Jesus and to call on His name. There is something about walking lockstep together, amen, and to allow, amen, this the, the devil to know that you tried to, to destroy what God made, but I want you to know that when God puts something back together, it will be greater, amen, than what it was in its original intent, praise God. And so I want to say to somebody here today, I know that you may be fighting you may be looking at the trouble of this world and you may be discouraged. You may be de depressed. But I want you to know that when God filled you with the Holy Ghost, He gave you something greater than that you had that, than before you came into His presence. There's something about it, folks. When we give ourselves, God is a restorer. God is a maker. Hallelujah. God, hallelujah. He made the world. And if you go back and read, I preached about this a few weeks ago, you, you go and you read and you say God saw everything that it was good. And then when he got done, he looked at it again and he saw that it was very good. And let me just say this here today. When somebody receives a Holy Ghost and is baptized in Jesus' name, I want you to know God looks at it and says, it's more than just very good. It's very, 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 very good. And you keep on going, amen, to those, those degrees, amen, the power that God brings in your life, hallelujah. You're not any longer a child of hell. You've been born again. Hallelujah, I feel like preaching tonight. We need to settle down so that we understand exactly what God is bringing to us today so that we can understand that when we're living for God and we're in the church of the living God, amen, we, we need to bind together. And so we need to understand that unity is not only, and listen to this because it's almost double talk, it's not only not quarreling and devouring one another. Have you ever seen people that just just full of hate? It's full of hate. Now, we should, we should disdain the devil, the enemy in our lives. We should uh, make sure that we understand, we know what, what righteousness is, and, and we should hate unrighteousness. 
And the, even the Bible says there are six things the Lord doth hate. Yea, seven are an abomination. And you can read those, a lying tongue and, and all of that. But then when it comes down to the end, you know what God hates worse than anything else? It shouldn't be a surprise to our, to our lesson tonight. The Bible says that He hates those that sow discord among the brethren. That's confusion. That is, that is dissension. That is disunity. And so unity is not only not quarreling and not devouring one another, but it's also, and get a hold of this, it's also delighting in one another and it, with mutual endearments, mutual love, appreciating one another, looking at the gifts that we each possess. Hallelujah. There's, and some of the people look around and say, well, I don't have any gifts. I beg to differ with you, friend. Amen. You know what? We can all give a compliment. Some lady walked up to us t uh, today, and I just looked at her, and I said, nice mask. <laughs> it, it was pretty cool looking. I hadn't seen a mask like this. You know, I, I was thinking about this as I was looking through some ties today. Maybe what, what we should do with some of these older ties is maybe take the fabric out of them because there's some pretty cool ties. And, and, and you know how the lapel, or excuse me, the tie used to be wide. The collars used to be <laughs> the lapels. Maybe we can take some of those ties and we can make masks out of them. I don't know. I'm just making that up right now. And I'm not saying that that's anointed. But, but, you know, we can find something to say about somebody. We can find something to encourage somebody. Or we can do the contrary, and we can find, we can focus on the negative, and we can find things to put people down with. Oh, God help us. There's too many people doing that. There's too many people assaulting one another when they, when they really don't have to. And it seems like every four years during the pol political season or every two years, it seems like we run into the same old thing and people are putting one another down. Wouldn't it be great if we could all just come together and, and find the good in people? Abraham Lincoln, President <clears throat> United States, who served our country during one of the most... Uh, horrendous upheavals that our world has ever said, seen. He said this, if you look for the good in people, you'll surely find it. But if you look for the bad in people, you'll surely find it. And so it's all about our attitude. It's about, about the spirit that we want to have. And we make a decision every time we open our mouth whether it's going to be a good thing or not. You know what? I choose to live for God. I choose to magnify Him. I choose to worship Him. I choose to endure Him and to love Him and to promote my brother. The Bible says that we are to prefer our brother or our sister. We're to prefer them. Prefer them. Some say that unity is to live together as one. I heard a I read a, I don't know if it was today or yesterday, I think maybe it was yesterday, I was reading an article, and here's what I found out, that from May, excuse me, from March through June of this year, and you compare to that time period last year, and that's the time period from the, when we were shut down, the country was shut down. During that period, when people were staying at home, you know what we have found out since? That the, that the divorce rate is 34% higher than it was during the same period last year. Now what's up with that? Well, I tell you, a lot of people are filling up their life with a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff that when they finally came together and they got in the same house with their kids and their, and their mate, you know what? The devil just then has a way and, and the ability to come in when we don't have all of these, what I would call diversions, you know, you don't got no basketball, you got no football, you ain't got no hockey, you ain't got no tennis, you ain't got nothing. You ain't got no restaurant to go out and eat in. You ain't got no bar to go get drunk in. Hello. And... And what they found out is it's caused divorce rates to go higher. And people have found out that we do live in a, in a society where we are truly and indeed suffering from the effects of sin and the fall 
But you know what? It doesn't have to be that way. Praise God. If you will fall in love, amen, with God Almighty all over again, you know what will happen? It will make you fall in love with each other all over again. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. When I heard that, my soul was, was troubled, and I, I began to realize and understand that what the enemy is really trying to do, he's still up to his same old tricks that he was up to, amen, in the very beginning. He's trying to drive a wedge, and indeed, he is not just trying, he is doing it, and he is succeeding. But you know what? Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Amen. If you want your marriage to work, your marriage can work. You listen to me, friend, on Facebook that's out there. You might be going through the greatest trials of your life but if you can find your heart and say you know what I'm going to give myself to God God will bring you through oh let's clap our hands to the Lord one more time hallelujah 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 some people would say that unity is having one heart one soul and one interest and I believe that that is one thing that we need to understand some people uh, believe that this this scripture was uh, relatable and, and was possibly written during the time uh, when King David brought the Ark of the Covenant back into Jerusalem and he settled it there. And because you see, the, the, when, the, when the kingdom, when, when things were going wrong, there was a time when, when they took the Ark of God out and they thought that they could just grab the Ark of God anytime they wanted. They could live any way that they wanted, but yet they could come and grab a hold of praise and that God would always respond if you grab the Ark. I'm here to tell you that God is looking for people that will live for Him. Praise is not some magical wand that we wave be before the devil. Let me just say this here. If you're not careful and you, you treat, amen, the things of God like they are not precious and like they are just things, amen, you better understand something. It's like re uh, waving a red flag in front of a bull. If you don't have anything to protect yourself with, the devil will just run all over you. Recall in the scripture when there were seven sons of Sceva that said, we rebuke thee by the, by the God, that this Jesus that Paul preaches. The devil looked at them and said, Paul, Paul I know, and Jesus I know, but who are you? The Bible says that, that that man that was filled with those devils leaped on them and started tearing them limb from limbs. They walked out of there bruised and scratched, missing hair, missing beard, hallelujah, possibly broken bones. Why? Because we've got to have God in our lives. But if you'll live for God, amen, if you'll pick up a prayer life, amen, if you'll find yourself a closet and go and pray and get a hold of God, you know what? God will make a way where there is no way. God will send power in your life. Amen. God will send anointing into your life. Hallelujah. When David brought the Ark of the Covenant in, into Jerusalem and he settled it into its place and gave access to all the people, the Bible says he gave each one of them, I don't know if it was chicken or beef or whatever it was, but he gave, or lamb, whatever, he, the Bible says he gave each one of them a, a piece of flesh and he gave them something to drink. And he said he told them to go home, amen, and to enjoy their family in their family unit. But when David went home, he didn't go home to a place of safety and peace. He went home and there was a Michal ready to meet him at the door with her hands on her hip and, and ready to challenge him and said, Oh, did the king uncover himself today before all the handmaidens of, of Israel? Got into discussion and it turned into a, a thing about Saul and a thing about David. The spirit of Saul, I want you to know, was a, was a critical spirit. It was a spirit of pride. It was a spirit of being lifted up, uh, lifting up flesh instead of lifting up God. And, and David said this. He said, I will, be, I will humble myself more in the sight of God. I will abase myself more and I will praise God more. The Bible even lets us know that, that David undressed his kingly robes and he went all the way down to the robe of the, of the linen ephod, which was the, was the garment that the high priest wore in. Amen. The Bible says that, that he went in to, when he was going into that, getting ready to enter into the holy place. He went in and he changed his clothes there. And he would go in and he would, that was when he entered into the holy place. I want you to know that David was entering into a holy place when he was bringing the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. 
There's something about it, folks. Uh, you just don't enter into the presence of God, amen, as if you are just, you know, walking in off the street, amen. We need to have a season of prayer when we come to the house of God. We need to find a place to pray in this sanctuary. You can go into these prayer rooms if you want. They're, this one over here is kind of messed up a little bit now because of some of the work and some of the things we've had to do. But you know what? We can clean it out, and we can come together and pray. We can pray right in here. But we need to pray. We need God. We need to come into this house and change our spiritual clothes and let God know I'm ready to come and praise you. I'm ready to worship you. I'm not telling you you need to come in and put a tuxedo on or you need to have a, an evening gown on before you can come into the presence of the Lord. But here's what I say to us. We need to change our spiritual clothes. We need to change our garments to let God know, amen, that He is real in our lives, amen, that He is mighty, that He is strong, and that we recognize and respect His presence. Amen. I was reading another well, somebody else looked at this, this verse here in 133 and 1, and they, they said that, that it could be interpreted this way, that said that it is a rare thing for brethren to dwell in unity. And if you look throughout the course of your Bible, you will find that there are many people, amen, that just did not agree. Judas found it so difficult to, to walk in unity. The Bible says that he sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver for the price of a slave. I wonder how much we value Jesus Christ in our souls every day. Do we sell him for something that is sloppy? Do we offer unto him something that, that, that shows him that he is not worthy and valuable, valuable in our eyes? I want you to know something tonight, folks. We need to value our Lord, our King our, of kings, our, our Savior. We, he needs to know, and we need to know. I heard Brother Daryl Johns who's now the district superintendent of North Carolina. He was, he was the vice president of, of, of Jackson College of Ministries years ago, a very, very precious man. He, he came to be at some of the highest offices in the United Pentecostal Church. He was the conqueror's president or the youth president. I remember him preaching a message one time talking about preparing for the presence of the Lord. You know why? We shouldn't just run in here at the last minute you know, uh, take just wondering what are we going to do. Well, I'm here and just walk in and plop down. There ought to be something in our spirits. And I do understand being late. I do understand that things happen, especially with the, the, the road construction that we've had out here in front of our place. And I don't know if you noticed it, but the barricades are, are coming down. The big thing, the, the big concrete things that are, are protecting the workers, they're coming down. Hallelujah. They're going to open that road up. But you know what? We need to understand something. Hallelujah. We need to build a highway of holiness for Jesus Christ in this world and let the world know that God is worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. And instead of it being a rare thing for us to come in here and to have a, a throwdown service, and you know what I mean, a throwdown. Some people call it a runaway service. When we come in here and the praise and the anointing of God is so rich that people are dancing, they're shouting, they're praying so strong that it's, it just takes over. And the glory of God. I think God's having a good time. Hallelujah. I think God's having a good time and he anoints us and he empowers us. But you know what? If we don't allow ourselves to be together in unity, hallelujah, we will have a, a good service just every once in a while. You know, maybe just with, you know, even a, a stopped clock is right twice a day. Hello? We don't want to luck our way into this. We want to know what makes us successful in the things of God. The Bible says, if we go on and look here uh, in verse 2, it says, It's like the precious ointment upon the head. We're talking about the anointing now that ran down the, the, the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments. When you read the language uh, and you read the commentaries, it, it's a suggestion there that this was not just a where you come along and you know how you how you might put a little bit on there and you're, you're trying to be frugal. You're just trying to put enough on there. You know, I heard somebody say that you could take mayonnaise and you can take a, a plant. Now, this one here is a dead one, so, so we wouldn't do it to it. I guess suppose we could. They'll take mayonnaise and they'll, they'll, they'll find the leaves and they will put that mayonnaise on there to, to, to make it look good and pretty and brighten it and to give it uh, its texture back and to, and to add that suppleness to it, you know. We can that that can happen. I, I want you to know 
that as that anointing is, you know, you can put it on and it can be just a little dab. You know, it's like Brill cream. If anybody remembers Brill cream, my dad used to put that in his hair, amen, to control it. Amen. And, and their saying was this, a little dab will do you. Anybody remember that? A little dab will do you. <laughs> All right. right. Dippity doo didn't have a, a saying like that. At least I don't think they did. What was that? Palm olive. You know, you're soaking in it. <gasps> you know what? Some people are afraid to soak. Some people are afraid to be extravagant. You know what? We just need to treat it like a garden hose. Amen. Don't just get you out a little, little thing to come along and water. You know, them little waterers got that end on it, and it's got all those little holes in it. It just comes along and just kind of, you know, puts a lot. No, get the garden hose out. And, let's, and, and if you can really do it, amen, let's get the fire hose out. Hallelujah. And let's wet that baby down. You know what? We need the anointing in our lives. And we don't need a little bit. Of, we don't need a brill cream experience with God and just a little dab will do us. We need a deluge, praise God. We need a fire hose experience. We need God to come into this house. Hallelujah. Amen. And it'll knock the rust off of us, knock the crust off of us. Amen. And cause us, amen, to get a hold of God. And you know what? When we do that, the Lord will show up, praise the Lord. The Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. Hallelujah. I don't want God to be frugal with his anointing. I want God to pour it on. I, I want to I, I like what Peter said in, in in his letter, his epistle all the way back. First, you know, when you look at the, the, the books of Peter. He says it's like or excuse me. Jeremiah said it's like fire shut up in my bones. But but Peter said this. I love the Lord. Because he first loved me. Let me tell you, Jesus, God Almighty, did not spare any expense. Praise the Lord. He bankrupted heaven, amen, for all of our souls today. He gave it all on Calvary. When they beat him, hallelujah, he didn't, he didn't allow, you can only give me so many stripes. Some people say it was 39 stripes. I don't believe it was 39 stripes. 39 stripes, amen, was a law of, of the Hebrews. That, that If you would give somebody, amen, 40 stripes, that one extra lash, then you had to kill them for mercy's sake. Well, you know what? The Romans had no such custom. When they beat Jesus, that, that Roman guard beat Jesus, amen, on, on that whipping post. I believe that he beat him until, until his hand clave, amen, to the whip. I believe that his hand had to be pried off of the whip, and Jesus took the beating. Why? Why? You look at it and you say, oh, God, why would you do it? The Lord's saying, I'm being extravagant. I'm not going to hold anything back from my people, from my beloved. Oh, that's what you're worth to God. You're not some little common thing. You're not some little trinket, amen, that's being sold, amen, at a flea market. But you are a child of God. Hallelujah. Oh, can you clap your hands to the Lord tonight? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We go on to verse number three, and it says, Has a dew of Hermon, and as the, the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing. I am so tied up with this verse since I read this uh, last Sunday. I am, so, I am so just moved, amen, with what God is doing. But as I was studying a little bit more, I was reading about the dew of Hermon, and I began to think about this. The dew. As I was praying, the dew, amen, is something that is formed, amen, when the, the heat and the cold come together. The heat has been there, and, and you can experience the humidity in the air. And we've really experienced that this year. But then, then comes this thing to where the cold comes in at night. Those, those cold things come in, and it causes that, that dew that's been uh, evaporated in the air and residing there that makes it difficult to breathe, that makes it very easy to perspire and to sweat. That dew, that, that, that moisture that's in the air, when that coldness comes in, it causes those, those water that's in the air to, per, to generate droplets that then become heavy and begin to come and settle on the face of the earth. If, if, if you are out and in the evening time when the temperature meets that dew point, you will feel, amen, the wetness come upon you. In the mornings you will get up and you will see and experience the wetness of the ground that it is so wet. Why is that? It's because there is something that is happening. He said it's, it's like the dew, amen, that shows up. Let me just say this here. That is a natural thing for God's blessings to show up in our lives. 
It is a natural thing. It is a natural thing for the blessing and the Holy Ghost, amen, to be strong in your life. If we're not experiencing the blessings of the Lord, we need to ask ourselves why. We need to ask ourselves why. When you look into it, he uses two mountains here. The first one he uses is called the Dew of Hermon. Now, Mount, the, the Dew of Hermon was in reference to a common hill. In comparison, when you look to the second mountain that he talked about, he talked about the, my, the, the mountains of Zion. He talked about two types of dew, a common dew and then a holy dew. I want to let you know something. I'm not interested in just the common blessings that come to every man in this world. There is a common blessing. We've all been given a measure of faith, praise God. We all have been given gifts and talents and, and things that we are, are, are attended to. You know, some people... You know, are lent towards engineering. Some people are lent towards farming. Some people are, are electricians. Some people carpenters. Some people, you know, are jack of all trades. You know, all of those things. I don't want to just have my blessings come from things that were given to me in my natural point because there is the dew of Zion, which is a holy hill, which is a holy thing. It is an anointing and a dew and a blessing that comes from God Almighty. It comes because you pray. It comes because you believe. It comes because you fast. It comes because you read and study your word. It comes because you're living a righteous life. Folks, I want you to know that's what we need to seek. Amen. It's the dew of Zion. Hallelujah. So that God will come into our life. And then when we look at the word unity, we could really express that it is love. It is love. Unity is love. Psalm 91 and 1. And I'll just read the verse and then we'll probably be done. The Bible says, he that dwelleth in the secret place. Where is that secret place? It is in unity. The secret place of the Most High, we shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. He's my God and in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee, deliver me. From the snare of the fowler. Amen. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against it. Too many people are walking around like, like, they're, like they're a piece of junk. Let me tell you something. You are not a piece of garbage in God's sight. You might be that in the devil's sight, but you are the child of God. In his sight, you are precious. Hallelujah. And he will deliver you from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Amen. Let me tell you something. God's feathers, amen, are like iron shields to the devil. On one side, it is that, that soft down, amen, that protects you and is nice and smooth, and you can nestle into that. But on the other side of that shield, let me tell you something, there is an ironness, there is a toughness, praise God, that we can renew ourselves, amen, like the eagles. Praise God. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the air that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, that's diseases, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. Why? Because God is with us. And the Bible goes on to say, And it shall, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. You're going to be walking around and you're going to see people, you know, being, being cut and being damaged and being destroyed and dying all around you. But there is something that's protecting you. It's almost like an invisible seal, shield. It is the Holy Ghost that's upon you, protecting you, keeping you. No matter what comes, what goes, God is there with you in the good times and the bad times. When you don't know which way to go, when you can't see. See, God is there. He said, only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. You will not experience it because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. What is that place? It's a place called unity. Praise God. Praise God. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Amen. Why? 
Verse 19, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Amen. Verse 10, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Hallelujah. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all. Everybody say all. In all thy ways, they shall bear thee up. Let me tell you something. There are angels that are waiting to bear you up. And all you've got to do is call on the name of Jesus. Amen. They are standing alert. They are there to protect you, to keep you in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. We're going to walk on snakes and lions, some of the most fearsome beasts. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Why? Because he hath set his love upon thee. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. There is something about his name. Hallelujah. Something about his name. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it, and they are safe. He shall call upon me, and I'll answer. I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him. Listen, God says, I will be with you in trouble, and I will deliver you, and I will honor you. And with long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. Oh, hallelujah. I wonder tonight, praise God, are you ready, amen, to see God bless you? Is there anybody that wants a blessing in your life? Is there anybody, hallelujah, that's ready for God to just pour it out? Are you ready, amen, for your, your troubles and your, your trials and your stresses and your worries, amen, to be washed away? Oh, I don't know about you, but I believe that we're living in a world today that needs what we've got. It needs what we've got. It needs a precious Holy Ghost to come in and move in our lives. I wonder if we could stand to our feet tonight. Hallelujah. Raise our hands right now and call on the name of Jesus. Call on his name, amen, and let him know, Lord, I am here. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to love my brothers and sisters, God. I'm going to give my life to you. I'm going to live it for you, Lord. You died for me, Lord. I'm going to live for you. Jesus, God, I want to live in that place where you command the blessing, where you command the healing. Lord, where you command peace to come. God, where you show up, amen, in the time of trouble. Oh, God, command, command the blessing, Lord. Command the blessing. God, it's in that place called unity. Lord, move in our lives, God. I pray, move in the lives of your children. God, move in the lives of your children, Lord. I let the glory of the Lord, let the glory of the Lord show up in our presence today. Almighty oh, God, we love you. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. It's the joy of the Lord is our strength. Aren't you glad you know him tonight? Aren't you glad that you know him? Aren't you glad, hallelujah, that he's come in your life? Oh, praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you tonight. I pray God's richest blessings on you. I pray that you would study his word. I pray that you would encounter him, Lord, every day. Encounter him. Amen. Challenge yourselves to pray more every day and to be in his presence dear god we give you praise and we give you glory tonight and we thank you for your presence we thank you for your presence lord in jesus name we pray oh god oh god oh god oh god hallelujah 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 amen may the lord bless you i pray you have a great great rest of the week. Let's come back together on Sunday, expecting a move from God, expecting a word from the Lord, and to God be the glory in Jesus' name.